It's just a matter of taking out, oh, taking out these four screws. One. You see people walking on, they go, what's that? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, let's put it up in the air. Let's do it. G'day everyone, Hayden here again for Ham Radio DX and I'm with Richard, VK7ZBX, another familiar person on the Ham Radio DX channel. You've been in quite a few videos of mine before. That's always good, always good fun. So uh, today we're doing a review here uh, for the YouTubers Hamfest. Of course, this is another video uh, that I'm filming here for the YouTubers Hamfest 2021. Uh, for those who are interested, there's a playlist off, off to the right hand side. Am I pointing the right way? I have no idea all the time. It's the right hand side of the screen. So if you're watching this live, uh, stage yeah, left. yeah, stage left. <laughs> Check out those. Uh, check out those links to the playlist to to the videos coming up in the Hamfest. But uh, uh, and if you're watching later on replay, uh, just click on the hashtag in the title of the, of this video, and you'll see all the other videos on the Hamfest. So uh, so definitely do that. So we've got a nice winter's. No, it's not winter. Autumn. It is, well, yeah. well, it's close enough to winter. We've got a nice winter's day. Autumn day today. Twenty degrees uh, Celsius. Nice and sunny. So we decided to do a review video of. A Yagi antenna. Now this Yagi antenna is from Antennas Amplify uh, Antennas Dash Amplifiers. So if you put into Google or go to antennas-amplifiers.com, you'll find it. Uh, this antenna, uh, these antennas, sorry, are made by Goran YU1CF, and uh, he's got a store based out of Serbia, and he uh, sells a very very high quality uh, antennas. Now he mainly focuses on VHF and above uh, Yagi antennas. Uh, but he also has on his store, I've just got a list here, uh, he's got Yagi antennas from 6 metres to 13 centimetres, power splitters for those, he sells bandpass filters, uh, low noise amplifiers, he also sells some HF antenna gear, uh, he's just got heaps of radio accessories so check out his website and uh, there's lots of uh, different uh, things for whatever you might want, especially if you're into VHF and UHF uh, especially, so yeah check those out and he does ship all around the world as well. So today we're looking at the PA 144-432-19-3-2 CAP antenna. Now this antenna is a dual band antenna and uh, it's uh, 2 metres and 70 centimetres on the one boom. So this antenna is going to replace the broken one that I had uh, a little while ago. Oh, yeah, so I had a broken antenna up at my remote site. So this, this one's going to replace the broken 2 metre and 70 centimetre antenna. All right, so I haven't unboxed this yet. This is the first time I've taken the cover off. And, um, well, that's good. At least he sent me a tax invoice. Uh, so, what have we got here? Pretty well packaged. Yeah. So, there are some elements here which um, I need to check. Uh, so, those ones, so the, the 70 centimeter antenna that I had up on the remote site wasn't completely destroyed. Um, so these are some of the elements, some of the elements got bent so he sent me some replacements so we won't, we won't be needing those today. Let's not confuse things by putting those in. No, no, that's right. So what we have here is um, the boom, now he uses, that looks like, is that about 30 millimetre square? Yeah it is, I reckon it's 30 by mm, 2 mil. 2 mil wall thickness. Yeah. Um, and we'll do a close-up of this later on, but yeah, yeah, we'll do a close-up of this later on, but um, he actually uh, labels out where all of the elements go and he's got uh, each element um, numbered and then an A and a B so that we know which way the, the element needs to go around. Um, he also has these plastic um, sort of, yeah, standoffs for the uh, the driven elements. Yeah, the driven elements of the Yagis. So the, these elements mount in through the through the, the boom like they do there, and those standoffs are actually for the end connectors. So the end oh, connectors okay. the end connectors sit on top of that, and then uh, and then that yeah yeah sort of like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. So anyway, I'll do a close up of that later on, and we can show you exactly what we mean. And then there's of course the boom joints. So 
let's uh, put this antenna together and see how we go. There's a water drain in that one too, so oh. it needs to be up, up, up one way. Water drain. So uh, yeah, it needs to be around the right way. So let's uh, put it together and we're going to test out the performance and see how it goes, some SWR tests and yeah, see what it looks like. Just got a wicked shrink, shrink wrap machine. It's not glad wrap. <laughs> oh. So what um, what elements should we put on first? Should we put on Let's, the? Is there is there a set of instructions or? There are no instructions oh, okay. because it is so simple to put together. Okay. Right. Uh, and once once you you sort of sit back and have a look for a little while and figure out how it actually goes together and then you realise actually how easy it is. Everything is all numbered so it looks like it's pretty intuitive. Yeah, and what he's actually done is he's already pre-put enough tension on these plastic risers to keep them central so you don't even have to line them up. So it's pretty much just uh, screw the elements in and that's it really. Well, probably what we should do is we should put the boom together first. I think we probably should. Put the boom together first and then what we'll do is we'll uh, we might put the two metre elements on first and then put the 70 centimetre ones on, eh? Nice, nice uh, boom. Oh, the he uses the nylon, nylon nuts, nuts so that they can't come loose, um, especially under vibration. That's a, a big thing when it's blowing and windy. Mm. Um, nuts can easily come loose and fall off the antenna and then your as, antenna as falls you off. Know it's, um, Mount as I well know with the antenna that fell off. So uh, it was pretty windy up there to be fair. It was pretty windy, yeah. It's like Christmas. <laughs> Where is the end of this plastic? Can you find the end of the plastic on this one? I don't want to bend the elements. We won't lose sight of it. Okay. So well, that's, geez, that's, that's pretty straightforward. There's a three and a four, and then there's a one and a two. So there's a two. Yeah, so. I might get my. I'll get the other. I'll get the other camera over here, okay. and we'll just do a bit of a close up of what's going on with that. So pretty much what we were saying is, is the way that he does the elements is, or sorry, does the elements and also does the boom markings. He puts uh, numbers on each piece of um, hardware so that you know where they're all going to line up, and you can put them all together. I that would go same here. with same with these. So we've got um, this is one of the 70 centimeter elements. He's got one A and one B. And if we have a look at the boom at the appropriate point, Let me turn that over. So, there's... so you can see how we've got labels all along the boom, 1A, B, 2AB, 3AB, 4AB. So we know that that one, oh, sorry, poking Richard in the stomach now, 1AB, 1AB, and it's just pretty much just screwing that straight in. Yep. So that's Perfect. really easy. So, um, also the boom, let's just... So it's pretty clearly labelled there, sort of a two and a two and a one and a one. Yep. So then these are these are the boom brackets that so you slide the booms together, all the holes line up, and you pretty much put the bolts that fit. Well, I think they're the only bolts apart from they're the only bolts in the pack apart from the mounting bracket. So it's it's not hard to find which ones you're supposed to use. Uh, as I said, they use the nylon. Uh, nylon? Nylock. Nylock, yeah. Nylock nuts to stop uh, stop them from coming undone. So we'll go ahead and put this boom together and then we'll look at putting some elements on. Move that box really out of the way. Well done. Really well put together. Sorry? It's pretty well put together. I like that's a nice solid boom too. Yeah, it doesn't feel flimsy, does it? Mm. Um, and I think because of the size and just the wall thickness that is used, it's um, it's also light lightweight enough, it's not overkill. So professional builders like yourself, Richard, it's always handy to have a ratchet spanner in the uh, ah, yes. in the toolkit. These ratchet spanners are really good. Yeah. Because they've actually got four spanners in the one. Oh yeah, yeah. So you've got eight 
Four, eight. so there it's a ring spanner with four different four size different ratchets. Sizes, yeah. yeah. So they're really good. We we like using them for doing tower work. So you, you haven't got quite as much tools to carry up tools the to carry up the, the tower. tower. Yeah. I am letting the side down a bit. I've got a shifter here. <laughs> not another ring spanner. Well, I'm letting the side down because I'm not doing any work. I'm just standing here watching you do it. Someone's got to delegate. Ah. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've had a few comments. Uh, I'm wearing my I'm wearing my ARRL Cycle 25 shirt today. Nice. Now, what what shirt are you wearing? Uh, look, this is one I sort of picked up. I sort of like having funny shirts. And this is one um, the element of surprise. <laughs> I love wearing shirts like this when you walk to the shopping centre or whatever, and you, and you just watch people's faces and they walk past and they like. Because <laughs> you've got another one. I know you've got another one that's a UD packet one, which uh, has got one jumbled. That says, no, one that says, um, says, yeah, UDB packet, walk the bar into a. And you see people walk along and they go, what's that? <laughs> but you'll see people walk along and look at it and smile and nod. And yeah. You go, You're like, ah, oh, they're the nerds. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's provide entertainment. Yeah, that's right. No. So we thought we'd point out the shirts. Okay, so we've got one, two sections of boom. Now there's, we've, um, one thing that we pointed out is the reason why the booms are split like this is uh, for shipping. Shipping, yep. So um, if I can get the box, so if, as a bit of an idea, the box that it came in is about this big. Now what's that? That's probably about a metre, 1.2 metres. We'll measure it. It is. Just under 1100 mil long. Okay, so that's why the boom is split so that all the elements and the boom can all fit into this one box for postage, which is really good. I think it saves on on uh, on postage, that's for sure. Post won't do anything over. Is it a meter or? A... Yeah, something like that. Um, but that looks like it's really quite strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, and once you get those two brackets on either side of the boom, it's it doesn't feel like it's going to come loose, and of course, with those nylock nuts, it's not going to fall off. So, yeah. cool, cool. Let's put the third section on. Let's do that. Oh, fuck. Should you wait? I'm not paying attention. I've got to put the other bracket on the other side. One job, head. One job. One job. One job. Bit of a rickety table, but. Bunning special. Tell you what, it's amazing how slippery they are. I sat it round the back last night when I was outside doing the and then it was on a bit of a table and I turned around and bumped the table and the rig started to slide. <laughs> the table. Yeah, you don't want that. Okay, so um, now the way that this antenna is put together is uh, I think it's the two, uh, the 70 centimetre elements on the bottom of the boom. And on the top of the boom are the two minute elements. Yep. Pretty sure that's the way it goes. So um, let's go and we'll put the two minute elements on first. Okay. And in no particular order, there is uh, 17B. So 17A and 17B, which goes here. So pretty much the way of putting this on is just undoing those side screws a little bit and then just lining them up in the pre-drilled holes. Yeah, they're just a Phillips head uh, screw. And then just doing them up, just till it's tight, don't, don't over tighten them of course. Line it up, do them up. They're good little boom to element clamps too. Yeah, um, I think you can buy these clamps by themselves as well. So if you're building your own Yagi antenna and you want to use these clamps, you can buy them off of his website. Right, yeah. so that's two metres put up, okay. which took all of about a couple of minutes. So now flip over and we and put... Good. I like the way they're done too, because it sort of holds them nice and square. Mm. By having two bolts like that, it sort of... 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Rack sideways, which is good. So what you're saying, so if we flip these, this over again, so just having a look, so they're using two screws in here and that's just lining them up nicely. Yeah, it's just, it just it's a good way of keeping it at right angles to the boom. Like obviously, as long as the holes are drilled accurately, which I'm sure these are, because they're yeah. probably done. Probably done on a machine. On a machine, yeah. So we'll flip this over and now let's do the 70 centimetre elements. It's one of the hardest things is filming your own YouTube videos is you don't have a cameraman. Now we've got one. And for those wondering, the person behind the camera at the moment is Murray VK7 ZMS. <laughs> another partner in crime. Another, another, another one, yeah. That element sits flat on the boom. The elements actually, these plastic elements on the 70 centimetre side, you yeah. do the, undo the screw and they pop down yep. on top of the, the element, which is pretty neat. Because that keeps the element even more square. Mm, it does. For birds and things. And here in Australia, we have plenty of birds that can land on your antennas and break them. Some places have seem to have Lots more trouble than others. Cockatoos seem to be the worst, mm, don't they? Do. How many Amanda radio operators does it take to build one Yagi? <laughs> Three. It's, is that the same as how many does how many persons does it take to change a light bulb? Um, yes. Just commenting on the way the feed points don't look, looks really neat. Oh yeah, so I guess we can come to that when we when we put the feed lo uh, feed points on. Uh, but little, um, so there's a little just ballon. a little ballon choke. Well, current, yeah just wound up um, just a bit of uh, silicon in there yeah. to stop the water from getting in and and a nice little bit of silicon on the on, uh, on the end yeah, connector yeah nice. it's just nice to have stuff um, that, that just fits together yeah so the driven element the driven elements both go on the same side yes yes they do so um, no sorry so the the 70 centimeter driven element driven element goes here Mm -hmm. So what we do is um, take out, oh, okay. take out that. Now it's got the little screws either side. Yep. So you've got that. That's that screws there to stop it from spinning, spinning on this side. Yep. Okay. So 70 centimeter driven is on, mm -hmm. and now the next thing is the two meter one. Which, which goes on side. the other side. So flip this over. Ooh. It is handy having it dual band. You can get this antenna with one common uh, connector. Okay. So you don't need to get them with two different connectors. Um, I got it for a reason though, because I wanted the two two connectors to run into the back of the IC9700. Um, then I, oh, well, I suppose you could still use this as a, um, as a satellite antenna. Yeah, you could. Now the frequency range of this antenna is 144 to 146 and 432 to 434. 12.6 dBi of gain on 2 meters, 14.6 dBi gain on 70 centimeters. So you say it covers the FM sideband section? Well, it covers the bottom end of the FM section. Uh, you, he, he makes these in different uh, versions, so this one's mainly made for the sideband. The sideband. Uh, but you can get them for FM as well, yeah. So the only other thing now to do, now that those are on, is to mount the end connectors. Yeah, so to do that, it's just a matter of taking out, oh, taking out these four screws. Nah, bloopers are always a part of our, our videos. I like the idea of that feed point and ballot, like just a little common mode choke. Yep. And that looks like it's um, like 316 size cable. Yeah, yeah, just a little, um, what do you call it? The double shielded stuff? Yeah, I think it's RG, I think, RG316. I think it, it's even. Or two. Um, yeah. I think it's the same size as RG58. Oh, we're breaking the drill out. Oh. <laughs> 
So I'm not 100% sure which way this goes round, but I'm assuming... It looks like it's been tr tried on there before. It looks like it's been pre-put together. That way. Which gives you a bit of confidence if it's been pre-put together, doesn't it? That it's been tested. I think... Uh, if you drill into my hand... <laughs> I think all the electrons have fallen out of the battery. Oh. <laughs> Cut. All the elements are on. Yeah. What did that take us? About 20 minutes? Yeah. Half an hour? So not very long at all. So now we'll put it on a temporary mast. Uh, we'll run some feed lines. So we're going to need two le lengths of feed line. Oh, they're both in connectors. That's yeah. probably worth mentioning that the yeah. two metre one is even. Yeah, so two metres and 70 centimetres both use in connectors. So if we chuck this uh, up in the air on a pole and we do have a beacon nearby, mm -hmm. which we're going to... Uh, to point this towards and just do maybe just a front to back test and and uh, we might also do an SWR test. All right, let's put it up in the air. Let's do it. Those uh, nylock nuts make it uh, very solid, don't they? They do. It's not sure it's. The same here, look, that's, that's nice and solid. That's pretty good. All right, let's chuck cool. some... Uh, feed lines on. Got some feed line. I might just make a little bit of a loop there. Now, we better not confuse which feed lines to what. Hey, would we do that? Maybe. So one thing that we I will point out, that there is a little label that says water drain. That goes to the bottom. Otherwise it will fill up with water. <laughs> so Yeah, I think because... So the yeah. connector is also, so the connector is to the bottom, so... Which is a pretty good idea. Yeah. Too many antennas, home. <laughs> you can never have too many antennas, Richard. Yes, the optimum number of antennas is always N plus one. <laughs> the N, of course, is the current number of antennas. All right, so it's up in the air. Do you remember which feed line goes where? I do, I put a piece of tape on the 70 centimeter one. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so uh, what radio are we gonna hook this up to? We'll do the 9700, I think, so that way we've got an inbuilt SWR motor, and um, yeah, hopefully we can, the two meter beacon, I heard it last night, but the 70 centimeter one, not so sure. Cool. All right, we'll try it now. Cool. Okay, so we've got it on the 70 centimetre beacon, which is rather loud here at the moment. It's not showing anything on the S meter though. But it's quite audible. So we're pointing directly at the beacon, and you can hear that in the speaker. Um, so let's turn it 180 degrees and see what the front to back's like. Got a nail there. Pretty good front to back. Yeah, well, I can barely hear it. Um, there's a couple of nulls there, but there is a hill behind us, so you're probably bouncing the signal off the off the hill. So uh, we can go to this two meter beacon. Now the two meter beacon has, a, I think, a power output problem at the moment, so it won't be as loud. And it's a digital beacon as well. So that's pointing directly at it on two metres. Turn it around. Well, it's completely gone there. Yeah, that's... I can barely hear it in the speaker. Back around. Oh. <laughs> well, that works pretty well. Makes, makes a difference. Good front to back. Uh, so, next test, SWR test. Yeah, let's see what the SWR's like. 
This is VK7 ZBX testing 144, 150. Okay, Richard, so we're transmitting at 50 watts. Okay. And on 144, 150, because this antenna is cut for the bottom end of the band, let's see what the SWR is. And it's not even registering, it's not registering on the meter. That's pretty good. That's with 50 watts in, so. That's with 50 watts. So uh, I guess we can go. It's it's. Do you want to just let's let's go to 140. We can go to 146. At the call channel in Australia is 146.500. So we'll go 146.5. SWR's barely on the meter again. 1.2 to 1. Yeah, so we can go up a little bit higher again. So we'll them. So 450. Yep. So we're just over 1.5 to 1. It's probably about 1.7 to 1. So that's pretty good bandwidth. Pretty, pretty, just pretty good bandwidth, but it's obviously cut for the bottom end of the band, so that's where it, it it's matches the best, which is great. Yep, so let's check the SWR on 432. This is VK7 ZBX testing. Oh, that's 100%, so that's so, 70, 75, so, watts. so 75 watts on 432. And no SWR. Just registered on the, on the SWR, I think. But and of course, there's the satellite band, which is around sort of 435 to 436. Yep. So SWR is just starting to creep up, but it's about it's still only about 1.2, 1.3 to 1. That'd be, that'd be perfect, I think. Yeah. So just over 1.5 to 1. So not a bad bandwidth on, no, that's, on that. That's so good. Yeah, operating as it should. Exactly right. All right, so uh, we've built that an antenna from Antennas and Amplifiers. What did you think of it, Richard? Look, I think it went together really, really well. Um, all the bits fitted, all the bits were supplied, it was well packaged um, and it's nice and neat um, and you know the performance sort of speaks for itself, um, it works really well. And like we mucked around with, because we obviously filmed this video, but I think the time that it took us was only about what, half an hour to put half it together? Half an hour, yeah. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, great, great antenna. Um, so yeah, antenna. Good solution for someone that maybe hasn't got a lot of space to put up two separate Yagis. Perhaps it sort of saves a bit of real estate, perhaps. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Too. Look, these guys that make these antennas. Look, okay, to me, if you can provide a product, like no one's going to have an antenna analyzer and a, and a test lab to go, oh, it's only got this much going. To me, if it goes together as it should. All the bits are in there. It matches well, and you can hear things. Winner. You know, like. Winner, winner. Well, I'm going to add that bit in because that was a real honest. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, really, it's, but that's the, that's what it is. Is is it? You know. All right. Well, thank you, Richard, for helping me put that together. That's okay. And uh, don't forget uh, that there's more YouTube uh, ham radio content coming up on the YouTube is Hamfest. Uh, the playlist will be off to the right. Still, I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Ham Radio DX channel and also to hit the thumbs up button as well. That uh, helps with the promoting Ham Radio in the YouTube algorithm. So uh, thank you again. We'll nice. See you next time in the next video. 7-3 for now. Cheers.